Hi, in this video we'll touch on a few basics of evolution. We'll talk about the mechanism of evolution, that some sort of variation exists, that it is heritable, and that uh, the organisms with the variation have differential success at reproduction, which is at its heart is natural selection. We'll discuss how evolutionary relationships can be deferred deduced from DNA sequence in addition to the better known fossil record and then we'll end with just a few little facts about human evolution. The fact that primates diverged from other mammals about 65 million years ago, that humans diverged from other apes around 7 or 8 million years ago, and that modern behavioral humans appeared about 60,000 years ago. To put things in the big perspective, Earth formed maybe about 5 billion years ago, and somewhere around 3.6 billion years ago the first living cells occurred. The first milestone after that was the development of photosynthetic cells. Now cells can create molecules from sunlight and carbon dioxide, whereas before they had to scavenge them from the environment. At this time it is a heavily reducing atmosphere with a lot of energy-rich molecules present, but the photosynthetic cells develop the ability to split water, releasing oxygen, and after about a billion years, uh, oxygen starts to accumulate in the environment. Up until this time, it was being, the oxygen produced was absorbed by the environment. As oxygen accumulates, the respiration starts to become prevalent and eukaryotes appear approximately 1.6 billion years ago. Multicellular organisms appear about 800,000 years ago and primates appear about 65 million years ago. So we are very recent history and this is what 3.6 billion years of evolution has produced prokaryotes the bacteria and the archaea and the eukaryotes. This common ancestor cell was the cell that appeared around 3.6 billion years ago and the distances here are uh, related to the evolutionary times. Notice how close plants, humans, and single-celled baker's yeast are in this tree of life compared to bacteria such as E. coli. It's really remarkable to think about how such three very different forms of life, how closely related they still are. On this slide, I just wanted to highlight one of the big differences between prokaryotes, the bacteria, and the archaeobacteria from eukaryotes, and that's the presence of a nucleus in which the genetic material is held. And there are many other differences as well. So in this slide, we see the mechanism of evolution that there is a variation that exists in uh, an, an environment or a species of beetle. Here it is color. The implication is that the color difference is based on a genetic difference. That doesn't always have to be the case, but that's the assumption here. It, the, there's then an example of a predator which has a preference for green beetles, meaning that brown beetles are able to reproduce better. When they do reproduce, they inherit the genes that were responsible for the brown color, and over time you have an evolutionary re result where the green beetles have become extinct, at least in this local environment. A couple of points is that genetic variation, mutations, and other things is, is random. It uh, is not, uh, ge we don't genetically vary towards a particular end. However, natural selection is the result of a pre environmental pressure, and so that is directed. Therefore, certain traits become more dominant in a population, and the genes that are responsible for those traits become uh, present in increased amounts over time. One thing that we can discuss more in class is that f fitness, 
or reproductive success. That's we're only talking about reproductive success, not how successful one is at business life or creativity. It's just the number of offspring that you have. Later on, when we talk about genetic engineering, we'll also consider why you might be able to evolve far superior humans. We're not well adapted to our environment at all right now because the changes in the environment have occurred so rapidly. The last 200 years, things have changed dramatically, and we have not had a t time enough to genetically adapt. Even a hundred years ago, a broken bone could easily lead to death. That fortunately does not happen much anymore. So variation is key for the process of evolution. I'll just highlight here about mutations which can be ran. Gene duplications in which one copy of a gene is duplicated in two copies gives evolution the opportunity to be creative in terms of developing uh, modified functions for the two genes. And lastly, we'll just mention gene transfer, which is highly prevalent uh, amongst bacteria and a cause of a lot of our infectious, infectious disease problems right now. As to the heritability of genetic variation, this slide makes the point that only mutations that occur in the germline cells get passed on to your offspring and are relevant for evolution. Mutations might occur in your somatic cells, um, which will affect you and can have quite negative consequences, but those would only affect your offspring indirectly. Much evolutionary relationships are are indicated by phylogenetic trees and we'll see we'll describe a little bit how these trees are constructed however the point I want to make on this slide is that the degree of sequence relatedness is proportional to the time that has elapsed since divergence so our closest genetic relatives are chimpanzees and gorillas are next so we'll have slightly more numbers of DNA differences with gorillas than we have with chimps. There are two types of chimps, but they split off after the common ancestor occurred. So all chimps and bonobos have the same roughly genetic similarity to humans. Now here we've just been talking about a small branch of primates. Uh, at the bottom here we show that Again, we saw those three big kingdoms on the tree of life, eukaryotes, archaea, and bacteria. There are sequence similarities between human and methanococcus and human and E. coli. So these uh, sequence similarities persist, have persisted over 3.6 billion years ago, which uh, to my mind is a much richer record than a fossil record. This is an example of a phylogenetic tree based on sequence differences in the protein cytochrome C oxidase. And here you can see differences between humans and another mammal, a bird, a reptile, a cartilaginous fish, an insect, and a single-celled organism yeast, generally. Now before DNA was around people constructed these evolutionary relationships based on shared characteristics. And this example highlights the anatomical feature that is shared in common that relates different species. For instance, having four limbs relates amphibians, primates, and birds. Some interesting cases arise when the classifications done by DNA sequence and anatomical feature do not agree. And while I'm no expert uh, in evolution, uh, I would say that most of the time my gut would be to go with the sequence relationships rather than the anatomical relationship. On this slide I'd just like to explain a little bit about phylogenetic trees. 
that there are four different types of species in the present in this example. These are recent, these are current species, and there in the past there is a distant ancestor for all four of these species. At each node, that's a speciation event. And we see here that uh, species B has a unique uh, period and that species B and C share a history going back to the beginning. And we can define unique ancestors of various species, common ancestors, which are not specifically related to either of the two species that emerged from this ancestor, but it's sort of an average uh, you might think of in evolution. Now for evolution, not all DNA sequences are equally informative, and that's because of the selective pressures on them. Here we can see um, a portion of a gene, cystic fibrosis gene, that there's a great deal of relationship amongst mammals, and for birds and fish, only a small portion is conserved to any great amount, as indicated by the green lines. And we can see that the positions that have been conserved are the exon regions, those regions that code for protein. These stay more related because there's important function based upon those sequences where there is less selective pressure on the intron sequences. You can change those sequences more readily without uh, deleterious consequences for function oftentimes. Now here we see the evolution of mammals. This last common ancestor of all mammals is several hundred million years ago. The last common ancestor between mice and humans occurred, it's estimated, around a hundred million years ago. Primates diverged from other mammals about 65 million years ago. At the time dinosaurs became extinct, due to the impact of the meteorite off the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. When we talk about sequence relationships, not just within genes, but even amongst the greater order of chromosomes, here you can see relationships over a large genetic region between human and mice. And what's varying here mostly is the intervening space of junk DNA or introns or intergenic regions. If you took the human set of chromosomes and chopped it up into about 200 pieces, you could do a good job of assembling mouse chromosomes. So very related, not only sequence at the gene level, but at the chromosomal organizational level. So here we see some detail of primate evolution uh, at 65 million years ago. Prosimians, which I believe lemurs are an example, were the first to break off from the common ancestor about 55 million years ago. Old world monkeys in Africa and new world monkeys in the Americas break off. Since the lesser apes diverge around 25 million years ago leaving the great apes, orangutans, humans, chimpanzees, and gorillas. On this slide, gorillas diverged around 10 million years ago, and chimps about, well, according to the picture, it looks like about four or five, but it's more, I think more generally accepted, maybe seven million years ago and eight million years ago, when we diverged from those, our closest genetic relatives. In the human line, there are many different species of which here are examples of four skull structures of which Neanderthals, which existed over a million years ago, but probably only became extinct about maybe 40,000 years ago. And it's speculated that some Neanderthal genes are mixed with Homo sapien genes. Modern anatomical humans of the shape of the skull, which we can recognize as being similar to our own, appears about 200,000 years ago, but as has been 
described that even a hundred thousand years ago we are basically still nothing more than smart monkeys. Our brain is about four times bigger than monkeys. We have about four times more intelligence, but not fundamentally different. Uh, sometime around 60,000 years ago, uh, it's referred to as the Great Leap Forward, all of a sudden you see lots of behavioral changes, finer tool making, religious practices, respect for ancestors, and even leading to artwork uh, maybe 40,000 years ago. So the question is what has changed? The rate of evolution did not speed up that dramatically. It's, as far as we know, held constant for, for humans. It's not that many genetic changes could have occurred in those 40,000 years for humans to change so significantly. It's thought that perhaps the biggest evolutionary driver was a few genetic changes in the larynx and the vocal cords so that we could develop a sophisticated language enabling us to communicate with other members of our species, the accumulation of knowledge and wisdom, and the ability to organize groups into specialized labor. Then more recently we have the development of agriculture about 10,000 years ago and the appearance of civilizations about 3,000 years ago. If you're interested in evolution in general, uh, on the very first page I linked to an awesome website about evolution. If you're interested in the relationship between man and apes, I could recommend the book the Third Chimpanzee by Jared Diamond, or more recent human history, Guns, Germs, and Steel, are fascinating about the development of humans and modern civilization. Of course, whole courses are given on the topic of evolution, uh, but I only had a, a short amount of time to devote to the basics, which is, again, genetic variation that can be inherited and differential reproductive success of the, the variation. Thank you.